friends and welcome back. Today we are going to do Becky at Acre Homestead's um, freezer pizza dough. I really want to have some pizza doughs put up. So I'm using a bowl that I previously had already used for something, which is perfectly fine. And the only part that you miss is I used, it's one and a half cups of water. So I add it, I doubled it. I'm gonna double the whole recipe. So let's see. Water's in there. Like I said, it doesn't matter if there's any other flour in there. So we did the water, 110, 115, still a little warm. And I am using, I keep my yeast like this. If you saw my Sicilian pizza, double it so we need where is it two and one four teaspoons of instant yeast so I have to double it one two one fourth and then again, one, two, one fourth of the yeast is going into the bowl. I am using Flushman's Instant and I want to make a double batch. So I think that should get me two, at least four for starters because my bowl is not that big. Then we're going to go in with a tablespoon, actually two tablespoons of sugar. I should have left some sugar out from a previous recipe. So we need one, two, because that feeds the yeast. So I am following uh, Becky's recipe over at Acre Homestead for a freezer pizza dough and I'm excited to have some pizzas up in my freezer. Uh, let's see, two tablespoons of olive oil, which I just had that out. What did I, oh here, it's right in front of my face. So we're going to do four. Three, four, because I am doubling it. It's three and a half to four cups all purpose flour. Um, yeah, let's give that a whisk. Why I get the flour together. So this is exciting. I love Becky's channel. And I want convenient pizza dough in the freezer. So whenever I feel like I want a pizza, I already have them made. Okay, one word to the flour. She has um, all-purpose flour. So that is what we're going to use. Let me scoot this over a second. Three, and we need a half. And I brought up another bag so I can refill my container. So 
this would be the original if you're just doing a single batch. This is going to get pretty full. Uh, that is. So let's go in with the next three and a half. If you're going to do it, you might as well double it. One. Okay, I just said goodbye to Jean, who's going to get her nails done, and I'm filling up my other container with all-purpose flour, and all I have to do is add in my half, which is right there, so we are good. Made a little bit of a tiny mess, but that's okay. Little tip, if you're using a bunch of different flowers, keep the tag inside your flower. Okay, so let's double check. Make sure I have everything to be able to make Becky from Acre Homestead's frozen pizza dough, which I'm excited about, if you know. I'm staying with Thomas and Jean, and that would be quick and easy to pick out some pizzas. Okay, now on top, we're going to add the salt. You don't want to put the salt right in with your yeast because it can actually do more damage to your yeast. So one teaspoon of salt. So we're going to go in a tablespoon of salt. If you know, you know, if you skip on the um, salt, it will not have any flavor. Just known facts. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I already put the oil in there. And let me show you this. Do you see how it's foaming right there? That's excellent. So I'm super excited. I feel like I can talk louder when no one's here. Sometimes I just get a little embarrassed speaking when other people are here. Anyway, um, so now we're basically in just in a stand mixer. We added all the ingredients. If we have to add in a little bit more flour, that's okay. I'm familiar with that. And we're going to start giving this a mix and hope to goodness it doesn't fly all out. So what I normally do, we'll just start clicking it. So it starts incorporating without flying all over the kitchen. Just my little trick. Yay! Okay, so this is exciting because I love Becky and I need some pizza doughs in the freezers for spontaneous cooking here. We like pizza during Lent and things like that. We usually will eat a pizza on a Friday. So, thank you Becky for sharing this recipe. I'm calling it Convenience Freezer Pizza Dough, but if you go under her website, scratchpantry.com it's under there as freezer pizza dough so it makes two crust I should get four let's turn this up a little bit because the machine has to work a little bit harder put all that extra in there let me show you what it's looking like move you closer and lower you down we're just going to let it mix and then we will keep an eye on it to see if it's too sticky. You can add, I would do like a tablespoon at a time. Don't overdo it. Um, you know, you want it to be, I mean, I'm not an amateur with making pizza doughs. I just want to use our recipe to freeze it. But if it's tacky, that's okay. It just can't be too tacky. And if I have to, I'd like to make this back again because I would have two, four. This will give me four. Right? Let's see. So the freezer pizza dough makes two pizzas. So I'll get four. 
if I make it again, I could definitely have extra. So that is a bonus. Let's start giving this a mix. And I'm going to turn it down on low because I can already tell from experience that it is in need of a little bit more flour so that it comes together. That's one tablespoon. Like I said, just do one tablespoon at a time. There's two, and let's see how that does. If this was my big KitchenAid, I wouldn't even be able to leave these on here because it's just so loud. Hopefully this isn't too noisy for you. You want the dough to come together and pull away from the bowl. I have some Ziploc baggies together. I'll show you that process on what she suggests to do. of putting it in the baggie um, and putting it in the freezer. So like I said, my friends, tablespoon at a time. It is affected by weather. It's affected if your kitchen's really, really cold. Uh, Jean has a big patio door with a doggy door here, so it tends to be a little bit more on the chilly side in the kitchen. And we're just gonna let this go. Okay, I wanted to turn it up a little bit just to see what this is doing. When I touch it, it is uber uber sticky so we are going to have to go in with some more flour if I could not spill it all over the counter that would be great Just that the mixer is working a little extra hard because that was a lot in there. Now that should definitely pull it away. Hopefully. You want it to clean the bowl. Come away from the side. And it's not doing that yet. Okay, I just want to point out something on her instructions. It's three and a half to four cups. So by me adding a tablespoon at a time is not messing with her recipe, but I'm familiar with doing dough. So, you know, we got to just keep adding. Don't get scared. We just got to keep adding flour, tablespoon at a time. I'm doing two. And so it completely pulls away from the bowl. A lot of flour that went in there. And we'll see if this will work this time. Okay, we're almost there, my friends. Almost. back on, let that flour mix in there. Let I semi clean up my mess. Okay, it's definitely a lot of flour. There we go, it's starting to come away from the bowl. You want your bowl to be clean. What I tend to look for, say it's still sticking a little bit. You want it tacky, you don't want it too tacky. So we're going in with one more tablespoon of flour. Start it on slow. Whoops. You 
because it was still sticking to the bottom of the bowl. So let's just keep going. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I am going to call that done. Now what you want to do is you want to let this knead for a few minutes or you could pull it out and do it yourself. I'm going to call that good. Something I noticed about my KitchenAid because it was laying down flat in a tote is this piece right here keeps wanting to come out that side. So I'm going to have to look into that. But this, see the difference? It's not sticking. Looks good. I guess I will just try to let it knead it in here for five to seven minutes okay now do you see how that is it's looking a little bit better it's trying to knead it the KitchenAid wants to bounce all over the counter so I'm gonna call that good because I'm not shy to get my hands dirty let me roll my sleeves up and I have to get the baggies we're gonna need this for a few minutes and I'm gonna have to split it I have to have the oil together. You can use olive oil. I'm starting to run a little low on my olive oil. I'm going to have to get more. But you can use avocado oil. It has no flavor. Um, so that would work too. I just want to make sure the counter is good. To get all this dough out. And I don't have my dough scraper. And you know, I live in a house of dogs. Okay, sorry. Someone was at the door. Amazon. I had to get jeans package. So I'm going to lift this up. We are going to get all this off the dough hook. Like I said, tacky, yes. Too tacky, no. So this will come right off with my fingers. I'm going to let that stay like that because I want to position you. I'm going to move you to here because I'm going to use this area just to knead it for a few with a little bit of flour. Just going to take a little bit, like so. Spread it. I just talked to Jean today. I asked her if she mind if she minded if I take over this part of the counter, and she said, "Nope, you're the baker," because they like my food, and um. Any of the baked goods, they like that as well. And they definitely like my chocolate chip cookies. I have to make them quite a bit. So, unfortunately, I wish I would have brought up... I brought up my Danish dough hook that I've had for a few years for something else that I'm going to be doing. But this is going to go into my pizza playlist. Again, this is Becky's recipe. I think it's her recipe. It's on her website. Um, I really want it, I mean, I have my own pizza dough, which I will make that as well, but I want it to follow someone else's recipe so that I can actually freeze some pizzas. Okay, let me show you. There it is, it's quite heavy, and I don't think Jean has a scraper. I cannot believe I didn't pull my scraper out. Um, let me just look very quickly. I'm not seeing one, so we will make do with getting it out. You can put a little flour on your fingers and just dump all this out. Like I said, it's supposed to be tacky, not too tacky. It gives you a better, um, pizza, actually if it's a little bit more tackier. Now, in another video that'll be coming up in this series that I'm doing, of all different types of pizzas, Sicilian, 
all that fun jazz. I will get into different flowers because I think, and I said this in a previous video, bread flour works really well. Um, it gives you a different texture. So I'm just trying to make sure that I get as much as this out as possible. And then I'm just going to need it for a few. Okay. Not too bad. There's the dough. Just trying to make sure you see everything well. And then I am technically just going to start moving it around the counter. I'm just going to give it a knead for like a second. You really don't have to do a whole lot. It's not in her directions. I'm just familiar with pizza, so I am just going to clean up all this flour that's all over the counter. Because if you have a good pizza dough, it should be able to absorb all of this. And I am just basically kneading it for a minute into a ball. I think it needs a tiny bit more down. You don't want it to stick. Okay. Don't add too much flour, but if it's, it's a little tacky. That looks good. It looks very good to me. You can also Pinch the bottom up like this. By the way, did I ever tell you I worked in a pizza parlor? <laughs> years and years ago, my friends. We are going way back. You can roll the dough, push it towards you. Beautiful. You bring you closer. And lower you down. There it is. Look, when you press the dough and it springs back like that, that's, that's good. Okay, now this is supposed to get me four per Becky's recipe. Like I said, I'm just cleaning up the flour. Okay, four to be able to go into the freezer. So let's go with, how did they use the serrated? I'm going to go in with a serrated knife. I'm just trying to make this as even as possible. I'm going to go in half. You don't have to use a serrated, but. And these are no scratch counters. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Looks pretty good. Then I'm going to take this one. I'm just going to knead it up a little bit. So another ball. And I'm going to cut this one in half. Just like so. And then I am just going to bring it to a ball. I'm going to set that off to the side. Here is our second pizza dough. I'm trying, I do a lot of the cooking here now. <laughs> Helps Jean out a lot. And um, I thought that that would be great. It's got a bubble. I thought that that would be great um, to try Becky's freezer. I'm calling it freezer. Um, well, actually, I'm calling it convenience freezer dough. If you want them exacto size, then you can get out of scale. But I'm not real worried about it. I'm just going to bring this one to a ball. And I'm going to just... 
cut it in half. We now have four convenient pizzas ready to go to the next step. Okay. Now, she says to um, <clears throat> once the dough forms the ball, place the oil dough in a freezer bag. So I want to shape this one into a ball, like so. And then we have to do this one. And then I want to get the freezer baggies over here. These two are already rising. They look a little bit bigger, but that's okay. There they are. Now I'm going to get my four baggies that I plan on recycling. I'm going to start opening them. And then I will put the oil on it. Now, she doesn't say anything about letting it rest. Um, let's say once dough forms ball, place oil dough in a freezer bag. When ready to make pizza, take dough out of freezer and refrigerate overnight. Once thawed, remove the dough from the refrigerator and let it sit room temperature for 30 minutes. So talk about some convenience. Have you seen the price in pizza pies these days? Crazy. Actually, I'm short one baggie. Let me grab one more. I'm going to get these in there, and I might actually make another batch. Why not? I mean, I'm already here doing it, right? Okay. She doesn't specify oil, so let me just get some of this off my hands. Okay. They look pretty good, don't they? Okay. Okay. A little bit of olive oil left and I plan on making another batch so like I said she doesn't specify so as long as it's a flavorless oil so what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of oil on my hands rub it I'm gonna go right over the top of these bad boys with a little bit of oil all the way around them I'm going to wash my hands and we're going to get these in freezer baggies and then we're going to label them. Okay, I have some hot water that you hear in the background running in the bowl because this time around I want to clean it before I move on to the next step. So I'm just going to lift this up. I'm going to let it touch the next one so it gets a little oil on it. And there is our pizza dough. Let me move this out of your way. Now I just need to hope I can find a Sharpie marker. Lift it up. Put it on the next one so it gets a little bit of oil on the bottom. In the baggie it goes. I will refix them as I get these all. There we go, my friends. I have four of Becky from Acre Homesteads um, pizza dough. So super excited about that. I'm gonna try to let out as much air as possible. I should get a rag and wipe up the counter because I don't want the baggies to get all greasy. finish cleaning up and we're going to make more so hopefully you just want to hang around and see it made again 
And I don't want to make the video too long. So you kind of have the idea. So I'm not going to bore you to death. But I am going to do another batch. So I will get... Uh, you say four. I'll get eight. Okay. So let me just seal these up and we will call this video done. So thank you, Becky from Acre Homestead. My freezer is going to appreciate you and this is going to be really good for my time because I'm having to cook a lot here lately. So Great convenience food because pizza out of pizza parlor is too expensive and you can just make your own. Let me wrap up the last one. Turn that off. Just let out some of the air. Make sure they're absolutely sealed. And there you go, my friends. We just made um, Becky from Acre Homestead. We just made her freezer pizza dough. I'm looking forward to having this. You have no idea. Um, looks fantastic. Everything turned out well. And um, thank you. Thank you for following along um, Why I made Miss Becky's uh, freezer pizza dough. Um, like I said, this is going to be a major convenience for me personally, and I probably will make another batch. So I got four. They all turned out absolutely gorgeous. And uh, that's my video today. This will be in my pizza playlist that I'm doing. I have the Sicilian. I have Becky's freezer. And just stay tuned. I'm going to be doing some other things when it comes to uh, pizzas and breads like pizza bread garlic knots I have a recipe for that of my own and my pepperoni bread I will make again so stay tuned this should be a lot of fun love y'all and I will get look how gorgeous that looks um you all know who Becky is I don't need to tell you to go over and subscribe go check her out do I we all love her but thank you again Becky from Acre Homestead on the recipe for the freezer pizza dough. Greatly appreciate it. Love you all. Like, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for some more fun pizza stuff. And I will see you on the next video. God bless everyone.